Hi, good morning. Chase here at Ever Bullish. This is a very special episode today, uh, as it is the very first rebalance of the Ever Bullish One portfolio that will be sent out to an email to all customers, um, clients, and prospects, so that we can get a um, a good feel on what newsletter investing really is. But the actual trades are in this video. I'm not going to give you the whole portfolio because then that would defeat the purpose for all the paying clients. Um, and I have mentioned one of the biggest reasons that I charge specifically $75 is that um, I, I have bought many a gym membership in my life um, and I was more likely to go. If I had a free membership like in high school or in college, very rarely did I actually go. And I think it's important that you as a trader get the buy-in. So today um, is again, April 6th. It is Tuesday, Turnaround Tuesday, and I will be talking about a little bit of the philosophy and the rationale behind these trades, so let's get into it. The first tip and the first thing to learn here, and this is true for any client, your broker doesn't want you to know this. If you go to a website called Portfolio Visualizer, you can uh, save and back test and result track any portfolio for time um, for return and you can benchmark it to any ticker that you want. It's very, very simple. I have it pulled up on two computers right now so I can't show the actual portfolio and I wouldn't want to because you could screenshot it and see the whole positions. So anywho, let's get past that and um, we're gonna talk about the rebalance very quickly, some methodology behind the rebalance. Then we'll talk about what to trade on this great turnaround Tuesday. So uh, we'll also listen to one of our songs. I got a good one for you today. Okay, so, so with Portfolio Visualizer, you also get any parameters you wanna set is what's on the first page. So here I have uh, the 1st of January, 2020 through April 5th. So as of yesterday, great way to track your portfolio, hold your advisor accountable. They do not want you to know that this is available, uh, especially for free. You get up to three portfolios that you can save anytime you want, and then you can use it as many times as you want, as long as you don't save a portfolio. It's a great way to get in to manage your own investments. I suggest that if you have a 401k or an IRA hanging out there, call them up, do a direct rollover contribution into a rollover IRA with Fidelity because that's the broker that I choose and that's where all the investments in my Ever Bullish One are free. Um, follow one of these portfolios or build your own. Don't matter to me, um, but I do wanna share some results. So again, this is the portfolio visualizer. This is the download. I will link to it on my website to the performance metrics on my website. Uh, the start date is January 1st through yesterday. I did a, an initial balance of $100,000 um, compared to the Vanguard, uh, the Vanguard 500 e, uh, index investor class index, which is essentially free because it's so inexpensive. So I charged $75 for mine. They get, you can buy that one and have almost, incur almost no cost. No reason to really fluff whatever the, the internal expense ratio is. So on $100,000, I am skipping the position, so you can't read those, but those are the positions. Um, we will uh, start talking about, yeah, here we are. So the starting balance for the Ever Bullish One portfolio as well as the Vanguard index is $100,000. The ending balance as of yesterday uh, is $109,718. Um, that's a 9.72% return. So at 100 grand, you would have made $9,720 in my portfolio. Go ahead and subtract the 75 that you paid for it. For, so for a quarterly performance of 9%, that's pretty righteous. Um, I am going to talk about the uh, the um, the Vanguard Index. So uh, the Vanguard Index is doing very well right now. High tides are rising all ships. Remember, it has zero exposure to small caps, zero exposure to mid caps, zero exposure to um, certain overweights and underweights of technology, energy, solar, clean energy, electric vehicles, airlines, any place that is not overweighted or underweighted, the S&P 500 is always market weighted. So every single day they say how much of what is in the top 500 stocks by market cap 
and then they're new on the New York Stock Exchange listed, and then they just keep keep uh, tracking that. Nothing wrong with it, but again, I'm I'm a bit of a uh, a, a build a better kind of guy, and I'm proving that I can do it right here. So. Uh, the Vanguard index is up 8.96% or it's at 108,966 dollars. So we're both doing very well. I'm still doing better. Uh, that's about a thousand dollars worth of outperformance, a little more than a, a lot more over. Uh, well, no, let's yeah, let's call it eight hundred dollars worth of outperformance over the last four months. Um, but here's the cool part. This is also a really good plug for the free portfolio visualizer. Uh, website so 9.7% um, return for the ever bullish one portfolio and all my clients that decided to implement that when it came out um, and, and since then and I'll show you why in a second uh, as far as uh, so eight, versus 8.97% the standard deviation of the ever bullish one portfolio is 5.89% that's a good way to measure the uh, kind of the average amount, not really the average but but think about it like 60 per 66 percent of the time um, the returns fell within 5.8 percent of each other that's a volatility metric uh, with the s p 500 the standard deviation is almost eight percent seven point nine percent so it's more volatile the sharp ratio on my portfolio is 4.79 percent sharp ratio is a good way to manage the portfolio um, uh, managers performance versus a standard i'm not going to I'm not, I'm truly not going to fluff that too much because we're comparing this to an index that's not managed and also sharp ratio over four months kind of straight up shouldn't be used. You need to look that over a long, long period of time, like five years. So I could take that route and uh, promote myself, but I'm not. It, sharp ratio, it's a, it, it is great over the long term. It is, it is in, not indicative of anything in the short term, in my opinion. And the U.S. stock market correlation. Um, those are the same because I'm comparing them to each other. Okay, portfolio growth. This is a monthly performance. The blue line is uh, you ever bullish one, my portfolio or yours if you're a customer. If you're a prospect, this shows that uh, each month it's a more stable ride and it's an outperforming ride. Um, I called this. You can go in and put the same positions after you purchase the portfolio and re- um, you know, reback past it, test it if you want to keep me honest. But uh, you know, this is a third party website. I have no affiliation with them. Uh, but but going back to my main point there is that um, when you're steadily outperforming the index over a couple a couple months in a row, you kind of go, all right. Well, if I wanted to, I could I could cash a little bit of returns and take a little bit more risk. So uh, I'm going to talk about that here in a second with our first rebalance, which is just going to widen this gap. But each month outperformance. Uh, annual lies return in a bar graph too early to really care about that but the the baby blue for the ever bullish one is is outperforming obviously as i mentioned so all, all kinds of really cool metrics coming up here we've got the arithmetic mean the arith uh monthly annualized geometric mean monthly annualized i haven't used those numbers since um since studying for the cfa exam volatility um 1.7 percent volatility on the ever bullish one 2.2 uh eight uh on the average monthly volatility um so average monthly, I'm moving less violently, so to speak, than the S&P 500. The beta of my portfolio, this is my favorite metrics. Back when I was a, an advisor and a, pretty much a salesman, unfortunately, of products for an investment firm, beta is the easiest way to describe somebody what they're going to get. And beta means, think about it like this. It is the correlation of your portfolio to the market. So the index because that's what we're comparing it to the s p 500 or the vanguard s p 500 same thing um is always going to be one because that's the ver that's the uh th that's the constant the variable is what your portfolio does and in this case the beta of the ever bullish one portfolio is 0.58 percent so half the movement of the market over the last four months and five days um, four months and five days, it's moved half the amount of the market and it's outperformed by 1%. That's the easiest way to describe whether or not an investment is good or bad. If this had a 2% beta and I'm only beating, or a, a two to one ratio beta, if my beta was two and theirs was one, and I'm only beating one by 1%, I'd fire myself. And if you're a manager, you should fire yourself and then go to one of the large investment firms and just pay 1% for, for a watered down product, but you're not. And I'm showing you um, some really good ways to, to truly understand these. And hopefully that's coming through because I want everybody to be able to manage their own portfolio in the event that 
investment management gets as uh, as generic and homogenized and uh, and unsexy as it is. Downside capture. Uh, that's not really that's not really imperative uh, or really even applicable yet. But uh, the final risk and return metric that I'll use in this um, portfolio visualizer is the positive period. So four out of four versus three out of four. Uh, the month of July, the S&P was down and my portfolio was barely above water, but it was above water. So this is kind of a way to go, okay, I know that my investment manager is doing the right thing. And um, it just makes you feel more confident in what you're doing, which is very important about sticking to a strategy. So anywho, uh, final piece, we got to skip those position pages. I'm going to link to this, like I said, on my website. And once I can figure out um, all of that, it will be the PDF format. Uh, and of course I have to leave out the actual positions, but any of my customers, uh, obviously get all the positions. And then here, I'm going to even give you a couple cause we're rebalancing. So let's just get straight to the rebalance. Everybody, um, that is a customer, which is who this is made for knows, uh, what they own, but here's what we're going to do. Real simple trade rationales. We're going to sell CVS. We are going to sell Activision and we are going to sell Etsy. Those stocks did not perform like I thought they would, and we're going to cut them loose because I don't see a lot of upside. Okay, video game company, I think the market's already uh, taken into account that we have new Call of Duties coming out, um, that we have uh, a lot of already priced in upward trajectory with the current stock price, uh, that it, it or past performance, I should say, with, say with the current stock price on Activision. Um, Augmented reality coming out. Apple's about to bring out a headset supposedly that weighs less than an iPhone. That'll be really cool. I just don't see uh, Activision keeping up. And if they do, I'm okay missing out on that because there's better opportunity out there. I should say all rebalances are optional, but this is a little bit more of what you get when you gain your edge with the ever bullish advantage. Uh, and I, I genuinely want to beat the market by 10% this year. That's my goal. I know that that's incredibly um, unrealistic, but uh, I think I think that I'm good enough to do it. So we'll see. And I think that you can be too. So secondly, we're going to sell Etsy. Etsy just has not moved. This was kind of the Shopify, the Spotify, the uh, at home lockdown. We're going, everybody's going to start a company. Um, and, and we're going to get this thing online. It didn't work out. Um, it just hadn't moved. I don't think it's a good stock going forward. I just rate it as a sell in general. So even if you're not a customer, if you're following along, if you own Etsy, get rid of it. There's a lot better out there. One of them is Shopify, but even deeper, I just get out of that space, um, especially with uh, coronavirus. Uh, it, it seems to be going away uh, in, in the news, at least. So, um, you know, bearish on Activision, bearish on Etsy and then CVS. I like CVS. I like the product. I like them top down. I like their dividend yield. There's a lot that I like about it. Again, I'm making room to buy the more opportunity that's out there. One of them is a position we already know. You can probably guess what it is. It's a suppressed position in ride. So, so we're going to buy, we're going to sell those three stocks by the end of this week. So by Friday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send multiple emails out to the customers so that we get this message. I want to keep everything timely. I think that's a cornerstone of newsletter investing. So again, we are going to sell Etsy. We are going to sell Activision. We're going to sell CVS. We're going to wait the three days and we'll be at the beginning of next week uh, to, to be able to deploy that cash because of the three-day settlement with stocks. And we're going to split that between Ride Everybody bought at a different time or most people bought at a different time. Not everybody bought at the very beginning of this year, but this is why that doesn't matter because we're going to equal weight what we uh, sell with the proceeds and we're going to rebuy into ride and we're going to rebuy into or actually purchase into with the other half of those funds. We are going to buy Delta Airlines and, um, this is a reopening play. This is an undervalued stock. I like flying Delta. That's the only company that I can stand. I mentioned before, I'm a top-down guy. I'm a Peter Lynch guy. I love Delta Airlines. Uh, I love it at its current price. I love the, the cheapness of jet fuel right now in comparison to um, to what's going on. We, we This is a an industry that the government has never ever allowed to fail. Um, simply, it's the linchpin in the economy is air travel. So, um, 
super bullish on the airlines, mostly bullish on Delta. So the, the symbol for that is DAL. So again, final time I'm going to talk about this. We're going to sell Etsy. We're going to sell AT. Uh, VI Activision, we're going to sell CVS, we're going to let that settle, whatever that amount is left in cash in your portfolio, divide it by two, place an order to buy more ride to lower your basis, we'll be lowering our basis in ride from somewhere in the mid-20s to somewhere uh, near 10. Pretty good value. Um, secondarily, we will be uh, buying Delta Airlines again, I just gave you the spiel on that. I don't care what the price is. I think that that's the right move right now. Your portfolio manager isn't doing this. I am. Okay, cool. Let's move on to where we can learn a bit, a little bit for our uh, for our our, our non-client, non-prospect strangers here to learn a little bit more about investing. So, second piece of this is why I'm doing this right now. And the second piece of why I'm doing my rebalance in the middle of the month versus the beginning of the month is if you have followed anything I've done, the Stock Traders Almanac, which I think is an important trading tool. Pretty much a required trading tool to be a good investor is um is pretty neat in its conviction so i'm stealing this idea completely i never thought about this before it's a little silly for somebody that's so uh passionate about all this to not know this but i would like to rebalance on the 15th instead of the first the main reason there uh the almanac doesn't go over this but it's my own uh, kind of hypothesis is basically that if you rebalance on the 15th you still there's some studies that show that there's more funds coming in in the middle paycheck of the month for uh, high net worth customers, or not even customers, high net worth investors. Um, a lot of people quit on the 1st, or at last, should say the 30th. So when we have an aging workforce, we have three times as many baby boomers than we do current workers. And as they're retiring, um, a lot of the times when they leave the workforce, that last paycheck is going to be at the end of the month, and then there's a two-week lag for the contribution. And then if they do uh, roll it out or send it somewhere else, that's going to stay in there for another two weeks because um, because it gets invested, has to settle, and people typically wait a little bit before they do the rollovers and such. So that's my own thought. Um, it's probably where this dude, who is a very, very sharp guy that uh, publishes the Stock Traders Almanac in his company, uh, got the idea. He didn't explain it in there. But um, your portfolio manager isn't doing that either. They're managing too many inflows and outflows. If you're managing this on your own, you can pick that up. I think that's valuable enough to, to give yourself, you know, let's just say uh, conservatively, uh, you know, 0.25% of, uh, of a portfolio over a year, but just by rebalancing on a different day uh, than the rest of the market or, or your benchmark. So, all right, we're going to shut the door on that. Done with that. We're going to move on and take a look at the market. This will be my longest video. We won't go any longer uh, than what we're doing today. It be, oh, and, it, and it's because I wanted to tend to my customers first, secondarily, I want to teach everybody something. So let's take a look at uh, the Stockmaster app. All right, right is up a tiny bit today. That's cool. All right, so it looks like tech is coming back. Let's see what TQQ, which was my swing trade of the day yesterday is. Swing trade of the day yesterday, TQQQ. All right, it's flat. It's at 100. Yesterday it was up six. Today it's flat. If we finish up, you get a 7% return in two days. Not bad, particularly for a swing trader. But like I said, I'm going to hold it. Um, I'll probably hold this until it gets to... If I can clip a 12% return in a week, I'll close it. If I can't, I'll wait for a 15. Uh, it'll pop at some point next week enough to close that out. So for my swing traders, I'm telling you, I got this really tight. I think that you might want to take some of uh, the, uh, the strategies that I'm implementing here for swing trades, particularly using leverage GTS. Kind of a no-brainer. Another thing that your advisor isn't doing is they're, they're not using leverage stocks simply because they don't have to count. They're not allowed to. Um, because of an investor protection act that was passed a long time ago by the very uh, the very lobbyists that work for um, or that was pushed by the very lobbyists that work for the big banks and the big investment companies, so they're saving you from yourself by giving you bad returns. Um, okay, cool. I'm glad about that. Uh, I did notice earlier Bitcoin is up to almost sixty. Let's see what we got right now. Okay, never mind. I take that back. I guess it's fallen a little bit since I looked at it. Um, I wake up every morning at two and four o'clock in the morning. Very easy. Pull up my Stockmaster app, take a screenshot, go back to bed. And I analyze a trend. I'm not willing to give the exact trend on which I trade for Bitcoin stocks 
but I do mention that because I want you to understand that there are all kinds of um, edges that you can gain out there by thinking outside the box. That's one of my big ones. I've noticed a correlation after doing this for a couple of years that, um, you know, I used to just go back and research what the price was, but then my, my uh, preconceptions and my, and my um, not emotional attachment, but, but I could see what I wanted in the correlations uh, between stocks and the price of Bitcoin. And instead now, um, if I wake up at two, I take a look, screenshot it, wake up at four, take a look, screenshot. It takes less than 10 seconds, truly. Uh, and then I look at those screenshots before I look at the price of Bitcoin and it's correlating stocks. I find that um, I make a lot better trades on those days. So that's also what it takes um, as far as being dedicated and whether or not you want to, want to, you know, get an edge on the market. So I love this stuff. It's not labor to me. It's not work to me. And at this point, you know, waking up in a, in a groggy haze, and um, maybe grabbing a sparkling water out of the fridge and going back to sleep ain't bad. So, uh, trying to think of anything else. We're pushing up on 20. Ah, I'll start playing a song for you while we do our uh, outro plug. Please follow my podcast. Uh, if you're interested in my content and you can't see the YouTube videos, please share this with a friend. Consider purchasing an Ever Bullish One or the Ever Bullish Balance or the Ever Bullish Dividend Portfolio. Take a look at um, Portfolio Visualizer, which is a great resource. I'm telling you about it. I wish that everybody knew about it. You'll be a better investor because you have it. And you'll strike some fear in your managed account manager's eyes if you just say, listen, I download a Portfolio Visualizer. I'm going to track this too. So um, we got to keep people accountable, especially if we're paying them, you know, a thousand bucks uh, on an annual basis to, to underperform a portfolio that I built and only charge 75 for. So uh, here's the song. Let's do it. I know I got it pulled up somewhere. So this is called The Queen and I. And it's by a band called Gym Class Heroes. And they were huge in the 80s. Uh, in the 80s. They were huge back in 08, 09. Yeah. I wouldn't call them emo. Uh, they got a cool hip hop vibe. They're from Buffalo, New York, I believe. The lead singer used to be married to Katy Perry. His name is Travis something. Uh, really cool, really cool band. Started reviewing it, uh, kind of going back to my library and hearing them out. So, this song again, uh, The Queen and I, Cruelest School Children is the album. And uh, really cool band. Check it out. Nice vibe for the day. And. Uh, with that, I'm going to leave you Chase It Ever Bullish, the Stock Sharp on YouTube. Check out my day trades, which I'm posting today. It'll be a lot of what I just talked about. Um, it's going to be heavy in TQQ, just so you know, everbullish.com. This will be under the day trade section. I will publish my watch list and my ready list. Uh, I'm going to try to spread the word a little bit on Reddit. So if anybody out there is on Reddit and is interested in newsletter investing and wants to post this for me, I'd love it. Um, follow my podcast. Uh, follow my YouTube if you if you like it and send me some info on what else you'd like to learn about. I'm trying to give as many nuggets as I can um, to help you become a better investor and to take on the uh, institutions that are tilted against uh, away from you. The table is tilted. So um, with that, let's get rich and all the best. Bye bye. Last thing you're working.